we have our Hoboware Pro screen open and our waterproof shuttle connected. Um, this waterproof shuttle is directly out of stock. I just I just um, got this out got this from my customer service department. So uh, and again we can see here that it's connected. And I want to go into the managed shuttle screen and show you what a brand new shuttle looks like. Um, you have to launch the, lo the shuttle before you use it in the field because there's a clock inside, a real-time clock in that shuttle that your loggers will use as a time reference when they are offloaded in the field and relaunched by the shuttle. If that clock is not correct in the shuttle, your time and date stamps in your data files from your loggers will also be incorrect. Also, if you change the batteries in your shuttle, you need to relaunch the logger or the shuttle immediately after doing that before you use it in the field. Otherwise, there will be a, uh, a nonsensical date put in your uh, time and date stamp, something like January 1st, two, uh, 1970. So uh, very important that you, you um, periodically synchronize the shuttle clock to the clock in your computer. You can do that without relaunching, but I always recommend launching it once you get your data files off the, the shuttle. But we'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So again, the shuttle requires Hoboware Pro. That's what we have open here. And we're going to have a look at the shuttle by going to device manage shuttle so here is our uh, device our shuttle and we can see that this was launched in uh, by the manufacturing department here at onset prior to um, me getting it so it's only four seconds off you can see right here shuttle clock uh, let's zoom in on this part of the screen here and we kind of have a look at it. So again, here's the waterproof shuttle, the serial number, the firmware version that's in the shuttle, the battery level. The last time it was launched, and again, this is before I actually got it from stock from our manufacturing department. And here's what the computer clock is reading. So it's saying that I, m my... Um, my shuttle clock is, is four seconds fast. So what I can do is just click on sync shuttle clock and now they match the computer. This is very important that you do this regularly. This clock can drift over time. So especially in temperature with temperature changes, uh, very important that you keep track of that and, and uh, do some maintenance on that once in a while. Because this is a brand new shuttle, there are no files in it. There are also some other buttons here that we see on the uh, in the shuttle management screen. However, they don't. Let me off. Let's left offload some data first from some loggers, and then we'll go back into the screen and you, we can uh, we'll see how these function. Here we see our waterproof shuttle connected to a conductivity logger, and we have the coupler installed. So we're going to um, I'm going to grab a hold of this thing and and activate the shuttle to offload the data from the device. You'll see the LEDs flash, the tra the yellow transfer light will flash. Notice the um, frequency of that flash. When it's flashing slowly, it's offloading data from the memory of the logger. When it flashes quickly, it's relaunching the logger, and then we should get the green OK LED flashing. Once it's completed and the OK LED is flashing, you can press the lever again to stop it flashing. Oh, I close that lever, and you can see the transfer light flashing slowly now. That's the, um, the data being offloaded from the logger to the memory in the shuttle. And then we'll see that switch to a faster flash. And that is the shuttle relaunching the logger right here. And then we'll see the green OK LED flash.
when the shuttle relaunches the logger, it l launches it in the same mode in the same with the same configuration as it was previously launched with. So, for example, if it was launched immediately from the computer, it will uh, say it three minutes after the hour, say. That time spacing is retained with the relaunch, and that allows you to merge those data files together, and I'll show you how to do that later on. Please keep in mind when you use the shuttle in this in this method, in other words, if you're using it as a data shuttle, the shuttle always relaunches the logger after the data is offloaded. There's no way around that when you're using it uh, in shuttle mode. If you want to confirm that your data was offloaded correctly prior to relaunching the logger, you'll have to use the shuttle as a base station. And we'll talk about that operation here uh, further along in this video. We've offloaded two loggers, and let's have a look to see what that looks like in our shuttle management screen. You can see now we have two of 63 banks used. We can see it, and it, it, it keeps each file individual from the next, and it maintains their launch description. Again, these were just the serial numbers were the launch descriptions of these loggers. If there was a name or something in there, that would be retained tells us when they were launched and the size of the data files and notice they're both labeled as not offloaded and by default they're both selected so what this means is that Hoboware is assuming that because these are not offloaded you would like to check these off and m take some kind of action against them so or with them so typically the first thing you would do is you would um, offload these data these files to a, a folder on your computer and again you could say no I don't want to I don't want to do that just yet and I want to make sure that they they're not checked off in case someone else wants to use the software or use the shuttle so you could just say unchecked all uncheck all and now if they if somebody clicks on delete checked by accident these won't be deleted but we do want to offload these so we're going to leave we're going to check those off and again down here we can say delete checked and if we click on that we'll get an we'll get a message from hoboware saying you sure you want to do that no, we don't want to do that just yet. We want to get the data from these things. There is a, uh, a preference that you can set here that automatically deletes the contents of the shuttle after it's offloaded to the computer. Uh, I'm not sure how many customers use this function. Um, certainly it would keep your housekeeping um, chores of getting rid of data files off a, off a shuttle um, easier. However, um, and I know there's some customers that use the shuttle as kind of like a, a temporary storage device for their data files. You can certainly do that, but it's not really what it's designed to do. But what we want to do now is we want to offload the checked files. So that's this button here, down here in the lower right. We'll just zoom in one more time. So delete is here. We don't want to delete them. We want to offload them. And you'll see you got a status bar here now. It's telling you what's going on with your status. The first one went very quickly because it was such a small file. And now what you see, what it just did is it basically changed the screen here. And it gave us a folder. Again, here's our two files. Here's our file names. We can change those if we want to. Again, you can you can change the, the data file names. However, they are by default there the description um, or the name that you gave the loggers or the deployments in the launch window when you first launched them. So here is Hoboware is looking at the last folder that I was in on my computer. So it was on my desktop in a sample data files folder. And it's going to create a new folder 
a new subfolder in that folder I was in before called Shuttle Readout Today's Date and Today's Time. Okay. You can change that. And the next time you offload data, it will go to that location, although it will create a new Shuttle Readout folder each time. So if we click on Choose, this is where we can choose to put it someplace else. I'm going to just drop it on my desktop. And notice now, under the uh, folder, it just goes to my desktop without that Shuttle Readout folder being created. So by default, it will create that Shuttle Readout folder each time. However, you can, when you select Choose, you can choose to uh, not include that folder if you wish. Just one other point um, while we're in the screen. If you click on readout like you would for a logger to read out data in Hoboware Pro, it will immediately read out all the, un, um, the unchecked or unread out files from the shuttle and take you directly to this save dialog box. If you click on device manage shuttle, it takes you to the first manage, shuttle management screen where you can select what files you want to save and then you um, move on to this um, particular window so it's a, a nuance of the software but it's important to understand how that works you also can check off open the folder again this is a windows machine so once you offload the data and if you check off open folder, it immediately opens, closes this window and opens that folder so you can see those files. So we can do that or not. And again, you there's a global check all, uncheck all if you want. Uh, I'm not sure why because we're going to save these. Again, you can cancel the save or you can say save checked. And this will save those data files on your computer so you can look at those in Hoboware. So we've saved those files and now we're back to the the shuttle management screen and you can see that now we have two offloaded files on our shuttle. So these are labeled as offloaded but they're not checked off. So um, there's no, uh, we can't take any action unless we check these off. So we can select one or the other or both if we want to, to delete. Again, you can leave them here. You can offload them again if you want to, to a different location. The other function, the other way to get rid of files that are on, uh, in memory, in a shuttle, is to launch it. One of the things that, again, when I was, and you can see it says write shuttle header, sets clock, and erases all files. This is what I would rec I recommended to customers when I was in tech support. When they were done offloading data and they were happy with their data, it's a good, it's a good um, thing to do periodically, launch your shuttle. Because launching it, it writes a new header into the, into the shuttle. So it clears out all the old information, it, it erases all the data from the memory, and it, re, and it synchronizes the shuttle clock for, so you can take it out in the field and use it again. So it's a kind of a one button uh, formatting, if you will, of the shuttle. So I think that's a good, that's a good feature to do, uh, to use.